Well, hello everyone. I have a statement for you today. Usually I have a question, but today it's a statement. Only the beginning. It's only the beginning. What am I talking about? Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu, near world-famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, April 6th, and I'm excited, friends. And I'm excited not just because it's Palm Sunday coming up this Sunday, but I'm excited as I am every week because we are looking today at incredible scripture passages all this month of April that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right, friends. That is right. If you apply these powerful truths to your life, they can change your life. And today's powerful, life-changing truth comes from John chapter 11. The Gospel of John, the New Testament, fourth book of the New Testament, Gospel of John chapter 11. Now let's think about that statement, only the beginning. Only the beginning. What am I talking about? Well, in junior high and high school, I played the trumpet in the band, and I continued through my first year of college. But when I played in the band, the concert band for Kauai High School, Neighbor Island, the favorite popular rock group was particularly, especially for those in the brass section of the band, you know, the trumpets and the trombones and all those, was Chicago. They had a beautiful brass sound, and we all loved it. They had many great songs, 25 or 64. Does anybody know what time it is? You know, the thing to do back in those days was to have a song that sounded very cool, even a little mystical, that most people had no idea what the lyrics meant. Well, one of Chicago's big songs was Beginnings from the album's questions 67 and 68. The first verse of Beginnings goes like this. When I'm with you, it doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing. I'm with, when I'm with you, that's all that matters. Then the chorus, uh, the bridge or whatever it was, that's just repeated over and over through toward the end. Only the beginning, only just the start, only the beginning, only just the start. The lyrics of the song were much easier to understand, of course. The author is referring to the joy of romantic love. It is only the beginning of their wonderful, beautiful relationship. Boy, that song brings back a lot of memories. But pastor and best-selling author Max Lucado has a much better understanding about only the beginning. Only the beginning has much more significance than simply a physical and romantic relationship between two people. Plus, it will last a lot longer. It'll last throughout all eternity. I've shared before that every day during my early morning Bible and prayer time, I also read a few devotional books including Max Lucado's 365-day devotion, God is with you every day. Max Lucado's outstanding author. Everything he writes is powerful. I recommend anything to you, anything and everything to you. Well, this is his selection for today, April 6th, that I read this morning. Only the beginning. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. John 11, 25 through 27. Max Lucado writes, this heart will feel a final pulse. These lungs will empty a final breath. The hand that directs this pen across the page will fall limp and still. Barring the return of Christ, I will die. So will you. As the psalmist asked, who can live and not see death? Or who can escape the power of the grave? Psalm 89, verse 48. Young and old, good and bad, rich and poor. Neither gender is spared, no class is exempt. No one has power over the time of their death, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8. The geniuses, the rich, the poor, no one outruns it or outsmarts it. Julius Caesar died, Elvis died, John Kennedy died, Princess Diana died. We all die, we don't escape death. The finest surgeon might enhance your life but can't eliminate your death. The Hebrew writer was blunt. People are destined to die once. Hebrews 9, verse 27. Exercise all you want. Eat nothing but health food and pop fistfuls of vitamins. Stay out of the sun, away from alcohol and off drugs. Do your best to stay alive and still you die. Death seems like such a dead end. <laughs> Until we read Jesus' resurrection story. He is not here. He is risen from the dead as he said he would. Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. Friends, John 11, that Max Lucado quoted, is the account of the miraculous raising of Lazarus from the dead. 
It appears to have happened about the week before the week before Holy Week, so just about seven days or so before Christ's resurrection, crucifixion, I should say, before his crucifixion. In fact, you know, about this this week. In fact, John tells us at the end of this chapter that this event, the raising of Lazarus, prompted the religious leaders to confirm their plans to put Jesus to death. John 11 is a beautiful account of the love of Jesus for mankind. He cared enough to make a special trip to intervene on Lazarus and his family's behalf. We also see Christ's sorrow over the devastation that death brings. Verse 35 is the shortest verse in the Bible, just two words, Jesus wept. But those two words, friends, show us he cares about us. He, he cares about what brings us sorrow, what brings us heartache. He is a loving and compassionate Savior. Plus, Jesus declares that all things will change because according to verse 25, Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Lazarus will not stay in the tomb. Friends, your loved ones will not stay in the ground. You will not stay in the grave. Death is not the final stop. It's not the final resting place for you and for me. Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, were devastated by Lazarus' death. But Jesus Christ brings hope because he is hope. Let me read John 11, verse 23 through 27. Jesus said to her, Martha, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Verse 27, Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. We might grieve, friends, when our loved ones pass from this earth. I just found out today someone that we know passed away. But we do not grieve like those who have no hope. Jesus Christ brings hope because he is hope. And Jesus Christ brings life because he is life. Let's go on in chapter 11, John 11, verse 38 and 39. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Martha said there's a bad odor. He stinks. I like the King James. He stinketh. <laughs> really emphasizes it. You know, our body knows that death is not a smell. We should be smelling. So we're revolted by death. We're revolted by the smell of death. Lazarus had been in the tomb four days. There's death. There's decay. There's deterioration there. But it does not matter, friends, because Jesus Christ brings life. Let's read verse 40 through 44. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Why did Jesus Christ call out the name of Lazarus? Why did he call out the name of Lazarus? I've heard it said many years ago, because if Jesus did not specify Lazarus, every dead body would have come back to life. There was a, a, a graveyard. Every dead body would have come back to life. Jesus Christ miraculously raised Lazarus from the tomb. He raised him from death, and that was only the beginning, friends. Not only for Lazarus, but for you and me. Death was the domain of our spiritual enemy, Satan. It was under his jurisdiction. As Matthew Lucada pointed out, you could do anything, you could do everything in, order, in your power to try to avoid death. But you couldn't avoid it. All you could do is delay it. Satan simply had to wait at your gravesite for you because there was no defeating death. There was no avoiding death. You were going to meet death there at the gravesite. But, friends, on resurrection morning, on resurrection morning, Jesus Christ rose triumphant from the tomb. The grave could not hold him. He was not going to stay there in that tomb. He, not, he only needed to borrow the tomb for a weekend. 
And he has made us a promise, friends, John 14, 19, because I live, you shall live also. What a glorious promise. If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, the grave will not be able to hold you either. And we're going to celebrate Resurrection Sunday in just 11 days from now. Not this next Sunday, but the Sunday after. And I hope you can join us, either in person or online. Friends, this life is only the beginning. Your salvation experience is the beginning of your new life. If you know Christ is your Savior, that's a miracle beginning. The scripture proclaims if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. It's here. It's now. Plus, this life is only the beginning. Death is not the end. It's only the beginning. The moment you die is the moment you become alive forevermore, friends. You close your eyes on this present physical world and you open your high eyes in heaven to see the beautiful face of Jesus Christ. There, all questions, all problems will be made clear. All mysteries will be revealed. As the great author Vance Havner declared, I love this statement. I love it. Today I am one day nearer home than ever before. One day nearer the dawning when the fog will lift, mysteries clear, and all question marks straighten up into exclamation point. I shall see the king. <laughs> Every question mark will straighten up into an exclamation point. I love it. Wow, that is a wow, friends. Every question mark you've ever had. Every mystery that has ever confounded you, everything that has ever bothered you about life, every question you've ever had about Christianity will be answered. It's going to be revealed. It's going to be made clear. That's a wow and a devil wow. I love it. Every question mark will be straightened up into exclamation point. Isn't that beautiful, friends? That is powerful. That can change your life. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. This world, this life is not the end. You know, we're surrounded by COVID-19 and all the things that it's brought, including financial problems. And, oh you know, boy, things are just, prices are just going crazy. Gas prices are going, going up uh, 5 and $6 for a gallon. That's, that's crazy. Government turmoil, world events. We're overwhelmed by the crisis in Ukraine and Russia. What will happen? Is it, is it going to bring about World War III? It certainly seems like it. it seems like the end. But friends, let me tell you, it is only the beginning. It's only the beginning. It's only the beginning for all that the Father has planned for you. Let me assure you, friends, let me tell you confidently and boldly, what is ahead for you is better than what is behind for you. Friends, it's only the beginning. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he declared, it is finished. What was finished? His life? <laughs> no, not at all. What was finished? His mission was finished, friend. What was his mission? To be the sacrifice lamb slain for the sin of the world. Your sin, my sin. What was finished? The payment for sin was finished. It was complete by his sufferings and death on the cross. Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin and my sin that we could never pay, friend. His body was broken. His blood was shed. Friends, we were born in sin and we were given the sentence of death with no hope of changing our eternal destination, our eternal damnation. But Jesus Christ took our place, friends. He took our place. He paid the price for our sin. and He provided us a new destination. Instead of an eternity of judgment and suffering in hell, we can have an eternity of joy and being with Him in heaven forever. We are given new life, new hope, new Identity, new purpose, a new family. It's only the beginning. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful, friends? That can change your life. Now help me out here. Is Jesus Christ in charge of your life? Is he your Savior and Lord? Is he your Redeemer? Have you surrendered your life completely to him? That's the place to start. I want to challenge you. Repent of your sin. Declare Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. Put all your trust in him and do it today, friends. Do it today. Don't wait till tomorrow or, or next week or next month. Do it today. Maybe you've done that. Maybe you have a response to what I've shared today. Please leave me a comment. I really want to hear from you. Please let me know what you're doing. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, please leave me a message. Maybe it's our website, honoloag.org. A great Easter thing going on. Or maybe it's uh, our Facebook page. That's probably where most of you are as a share every Every time that uh, there are a lot of people checking out these Wednesday Bible studies. Thank you so much for that, friends. 
If you're on social media, you're on Facebook, just go there and search for Honolulu AG. Or maybe you're not on social media, and that's okay. Our YouTube channel will be more convenient for you. YouTube, very easy to find. Just go there and search for Honolulu Assembly of God. And friends, would you give us a like or a subscribe, whichever is appropriate, where, uh, on Facebook and YouTube. And, and would you please, please, share a f- website or Facebook or YouTube resources with others so they can be encouraged also. If you've been blessed today and encouraged and inspired, would you pass that along to someone else? So they can be encouraged and inspired also. That'd be a blessing. Thank you so much. We're going to pray in just a moment. Well, let me share one more thing I'm excited about, as I am, of course, every week. And that's this Sunday, April 10. We're going to celebrate Palm Sunday at the 1035 a.m. worship service. What an opportunity for us, friends, to wave our palms and sing praises to our Savior, Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. After the service, those present will join together for an onless Onolicious, as we say here in Hawaii, pigeon, Onolicious Fellowship Lunch. Bring your favorite foods to add to the table. And would you please join us at 1035 in person uh, in the building at our church in Kaimuki near Diamond Head and world famous Waikiki Beach. Or join us online for our live broadcasts on either Facebook or our YouTube channel. We live stream every Sunday to both locations. So be with us either in person if you can, or online, if you cannot be with us in person, be, be with, join us online. You ready to pray, friend? Let's do it. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are the resurrection and life. I thank you, Lord, that, uh, that you have promised a new beginning for me. The old things are gone. Everything's new. I'm a new creation. The old's gone. The new has come, Lord. Thank you for that. And that, that I thank you that, that my future what's ahead of me is greater than what's behind me lord because you make all things new you are the resurrection of life and you have promised me and and given me great beginnings lord and everyone who looks to you and calls upon you your name will be saved lord they'll have that same wonderful privilege and so i i pray that for everyone watching lord every man every woman every young person every boy every girl that they would look to you and be saved, Lord, that they would have that new beginning, that new life in you, that new future, that new destination, a new hope, be part of a new family, your family, Lord, your forever family. Thank you for that, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Well, friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. Aloha and aloha keakua. God loves you. God is love. Well, there's more life-changing truth. Truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, God bless. We'll see you later. Aloha. Bye-bye.